we look at squatting, again, there's a million different schools of thought on it. What we've seen transfer best is a footprint that's not much wider than your hips and toes out only as much as you need them to be, not much further. We're definitely not married to toes forward or you shouldn't ever level change like a bunch of nerds we hear on the internet. And we certainly are not married to so wide that you have to have internal and external rotators of like a Greek god to squat properly. So we, we assess with hip, with hip width and toes out only a little bit. And then we tinker with the position once we see how it works with some of these tricks that we use. So when we hold the ball high like we did for the hinge, the game is going to be keep your head neutral by keeping something attached to it. Make that fat belly, drive your knees out, and then just pull your butt to your heels. If you drive knees out, heels down, you'll stay in an excellent position as long as your midline is raised. Switch top to bottom hands at least once or twice. Um, and if you're not feeling the engagement, tip it forward until you do, or get something a tiny bit heavier and tip it forward. The last box to check is you should feel this as much in your upper back as you do in your guts and your legs. And then that's that engagement and kind of power transfer to the much heavier tools. Okay? All right. Yeah, and so. Um, and broaden this out like this. You can get it like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you can elbow it down a little bit so the ball comes up and it lets you stay in the Imagine what a bar on your back would have to feel like right there. I just saw articulation between knees. Now I know where we're going to go. So knees out, heels down. That'll keep you more upright. Heels down, heels down. There we go. So now we've got a little range to work with down there. We can tip forward a little bit, but heels down has got to be your priority. Yeah, good. Yes. 
and now we have to have a lot of rain jets because we've got to move out to see ourselves. Keep going. Don't let this go. Keep going. Don't let this go. There we go. Perfect. How hard it is. It teaches you everything you need to know. Whatever the food. I want to tell squats. Most of you have probably done about squats. I want to have a few details that you can find in some progress with. If you're training yourself, if you're training someone that's having trouble staying really, really engaged in light weight, doesn't feel like they're getting enough work out of it because they're just so brutal that there's no way they could be getting enough work out of a six pound hammer. <laughs> I see the most brutal people in the room laughing, which I know is the right answer. Um, adding the panic squat is, is definitely a, a, a very effective feature. So we're gonna brace for a three 1,000 at the top before we drop. We're gonna stay there for a three 1,000 at the bottom. And then you're gonna stay there again for a three 1,000 at the top. Don't go to sleep. One. This isn't something you would do as a primary, this is something you would do as skill building or as an accessory. You can do it with whatever makes sense in the front. The only thing I haven't had any luck with, and I don't think it would be super sensible, is the tip forward plus the panic. So, <laughs> so, so a good strong bear hug is smart. Uh, a little bit of weight out front is smart. I really like the bumper plate for this because it also reminds me that my upper back has to stay where it's supposed to. And in the bottom of that panic, I've tried it with, with more 1000s. Three seems the most effective teacher that's just not unsafe for any reason. Um, and so moderate, moderate weight is, is the game here. Heavy weight is different reasons, different tools. This is to teach bracing, this is to teach engagement of the weight. If you're doing a five rep set, and in rep three or four, you feel yourself getting a little bit cashed out, but you know it's in there, you consider it a panic squat. Can you brace at the top, stay there at the bottom, and then drive back up? Well, now you know, now you, know you can if you practice with that strategy. So we'll take something light to moderate, Hold on to it like you're trying to hurt it. All the same cues that we practiced in the other movements. Three 1,000 before, three 1,000 during, three 1,000 at the end. Good? Mm -hmm. Don't do too many. Let's look at a goblin. We're gonna go over more power timing stuff later, some more tomorrow. Uh, but right now, thinking about lifting the weight into the rack position is not an afterthought. We're going to lift it in the same position we're going to squat it. And the pattern is leg, hip, arm, last. With introductory weights that we're going to be squatting now, of course, if you wanted to, all of you can just pick these up. We might as well practice what we practice. So leg, hip, arm, last. And when we land this goblet, hands are on the, hands are on the bottom of the horns. Arms are as attached as they can be to the side. And then with that in place, we're gonna pull this in as close as we can. If you can, you can always make a third point of contact. And it's really gonna help, especially if you have trouble staying connected to that weight, or your upper back or your upper body are not as strong as your lower body. That third point of contact is gonna help level the playing field a little bit. So goblet squat, same thing as everything else. The only thing I see a little bit is the heels sneaking off the ground. Heels are down at all times, even if you feel like you need to pull these toes up a little bit. The toes are important, but they're going to do what they do. Heels forward is going to create instability in a position that we can't afford any instability. Any type of front loaded squat, really unstable, really, really valuable. The full foot's got to be on the floor. Neither is better than the other. They're just different based on arm length, needs, weight. Good? So same thing, short hard sets, brace at the bottom. You don't have to panic it down there. But make sure we're starting and stopping. Start and finish each rep. Now that excellent squat. 
yeah, now you're in a totally vertical line. Like that might be a little bit hard, but it doesn't mean it's the wrong decision. Yeah, that was better. Great. Yeah. Um, yeah. Good. Now drag your knees out. Sorry, you can. That's the only thing you're thinking about. Knees out. Keep going. Here. Okay, that's a little better. Can you stand up? Good. The top down assessment we've only been doing for a short time, but it's proven really, really valuable. We've seen people kind of front squat ridiculous amounts of weight in the last year. And it's based on how we move the weight into the rack position and where our hands live when we're squatting. If we default to this, most of those weights that we've seen that are really on the high end aren't going to go. So today that's what we'll practice. Move it safely into the rack. Hand up as high as you can without putting the wings out. And then we raise and squat just like we have been. Good? So the kettlebell back squat, the transitional details are just as important as the squat details. We've covered the squat details. We know them. Brace, heels are down. When we're transitioning into the back rack, we're going to go from the front rack straight up. The flat of the kettlebell sits on the top of your body and then we make as much attachment as you can with the hand and the kettlebell. They're not going to be heavy yet, but when they're heavy later, tomorrow, maybe next time you train somewhere else on your own, you can use this other hand. You can use it to maneuver the kettlebell into position. But the game we're not going to play, and we've seen it not need to be played with gigantic weights on tiny people, is haphazardly draping the fucking weight behind you. That's not the best solution because if it does go wrong, there's no exit strategy. We like to think about redundancy. If we're back squatting with the kettlebell, the goal is not tear your arms off. So we'll lift it the same way we just practiced that we will improve this weekend. And then this hand is gonna guide. If you've never done this before, thumb is gonna drive back. Weight is gonna sit right in the pocket on top of your body. Everything stays in the same position as you had in the front squat. So that if you need to, your backup plan is just right back into the front rack. If something goes wrong, you just pull it right back to where you're comfortable. And then the squat here is exactly the same. The non-working hand is not non-working, it's just not holding on to anything. This is hard the entire time and anywhere but behind you.
good. Certainly simple, not easy. No one had figured out a sensible way to load weight in the back rack with a kettlebell, which basically means that unilateral development had not been done on a tool like this to complement supplement the barbell. What we found is if people hadn't, hadn't been assessing which leg was driving harder with the bar, one was always driving harder, and that was almost always the one that would get injured or come up short when they failed. We've done some assessments on the rower too, where there's just, you know, I don't know how many people watch them, but we've done some assessments where one leg is in the rower, one leg is on the ground. What is the force generation? How many meters am I able to pull? What's the RPMs I'm able to get? That's a really accurate assessment of coming back from injury also. So these, these one-sided lifts with the kettlebell are especially valuable in developing what we put together as a whole when we're lifting the two sides. And they can also be really, really heavy and they're also really, really fun. And the other fun dot to connect is the heavier these get, the heavier the barbell lifts get. So take some moderate weight, especially if you've never practiced this. Really hyper-analyze the details of transitions from one rack to the next. And same thing, three, four sets of five squats on each side. And then we'll move back on, we'll switch patterns. Good? All right. For sure, for sure. So right there at the very end of the room, go back and finger. So close. Yeah, and it means oh. that driving in is going to be just yeah. as important. Push back. Yeah. 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 There it is. There you go. I'm getting lower. Yeah, I see it. I see it. And then square yourself. 